Good morning and welcome back to the Livingston Parish News Morning Show. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys joining us this morning. If you're watching us live on Facebook, thanks for that. If you are watching or listening later, we appreciate that as well. Appreciate all you guys participating in this show. Uh, please remember that we are in the middle of a stay-at-home order. We'll talk about that a little more in a second, but of course, I, as you can see, I am at home. Uh, traffic today, you're looking at minor delays on 190 heading into Baton Rouge. Of course, if you're an essential worker, you should be heading into work. If you are not, please try to stay home if possible. If you are still going into work, we're going to be talking about some mitigation efforts uh, to go through in the future uh, or, or when you're at work. It's basically the same thing going at home. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but traffic relatively light today. Uh, some of that rain made it in some places, didn't make it in others. Uh, I know right now at my house, it's bone dry. Uh, it was supposed to rain. It might still rain, still a small threat of rain this morning. Uh, but as this front comes through, you're looking at a temperature drop. It's going to get up to 78 degrees today. And then it, the bottom's going to drop out overnight. It's going to get down to 50. So we are going to have a little bit of a cool front coming here, uh, coming through here. Uh, kind of late <laughs> you know tomorrow is april but it is going to get cold and that is my hello dog <laughs> uh, so getting into it we're looking at 4,025 new cases of coronavirus in, in louisiana statewide 185 deaths 34,000 total tests and of those statistics 1,158 are currently hospitalized with 385 on ventilators According to Governor John Bell Edwards, we're still not quite on track uh, on the trajectory that he would like. Uh, we had a little bit of a lull uh, on Sunday. The numbers that came out weren't too bad, and then we had a spike yesterday. So uh, he's expecting more tests uh, to come through today. So right now the expectation is another spike. Hoping not, of course. Uh, but we, we may see another spike in the numbers here uh, Tuesday. Now, part of the problem is, of course, we've talked a lot about being on trajectory with Italy. Uh, these This spike on Monday has pushed us back into that realm. We had fallen behind uh, on Sunday, but now we are back right, right up there with them. Uh, again, we've talked about this a lot. It has a lot to do with critical health care infrastructure. We, uh, the reason I mentioned the number of hospitalized and the number on ventilators is because that that is the major problem uh, with COVID-19 is the folks that have to get hospitalized and have to get on ventilators. Of course, those who have perished uh, because of the disease uh, have a lot of underlying medical conditions, uh, but in some cases they have not. Uh, but most of the cases there are underlying conditions. There's a pneumonia component of this, of this disease uh, that manifests itself way more often than the flu. Uh, the flu has a very, very, very low percentage chance of causing pneumonia. More often than not, it's because you are weakened due to the flu uh, and happen to catch pneumonia. In these cases, pneumonia seems to be a part of a lot of the packages. Uh, and, and I hate to describe it as that way. It's it just a lot of folks who get to the disease. Um, there, but you know, right now, if you look at it, the number of ventilators, you're looking at about a third of a third. Uh, so about uh, about. 12% or so, 11% uh, end up on ventilators. That's a lot. Uh, and of course, that's one of the big deals that we have going forward is trying to get those ventilators here in Louisiana. Of course, Governor John Bell Edwards has requested 14,000 total ventilators for the state of Louisiana. Um, We've received 192. Yesterday, President Donald Trump committed 150 more of those from the federal stockpile. The state itself has an extra 1,000 or so, maybe closer to 1,200 in a stockpile uh, at the Department of Homeland Security on a just-in-case kind of basis, hoping to not have to touch uh, that, that stockpile. There it is. I'm using the word stockpile a lot. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so, of course, we're going to be looking for uh, those ventilators to come in sometime in the coming week, hopefully, according to Governor John Bell Edwards. And uh, that should help push these timelines. A lot of the timelines that we've talked about are April, uh, early April, uh, in terms of running out of ventilators in New Orleans or uh, Louisiana Department of Health Region 1 and running out of uh, bed space in Department of Health Region 1. That's all New Orleans. Uh, now, here's, here's one of the big reasons why that's a problem. Now, first and foremost, those timelines have been moved back about three days each. You're looking at more the 5th and the 10th as opposed to the 2nd and the 7th of April. So buying ourselves some time, the more ventilators we get, uh, the more time we buy. 
Now the int- and of course one of the things that the governor has talked about is surging the capacity into the convention center. That's going to be a huge facility, a lot of wraparound services, which includes nursing, pharmacy, that sort of thing, Janet, even janitorial. They have to sign contracts for all that, get everybody set up. It's a very interesting process. Uh, but they're trying to make sure that that capacity can handle the number of people that are coming through uh, the hospital. Now, here's the big deal, and this is why it's such a big deal for Livingston Parish. One of the problems that you're going to have is that if LDH, which is Louisiana Department of Health, Region 1 begins to overload and quote-unquote collapse. Of course, it's not collapse like a building collapse. It's just the critical infrastructure begin. You can't serve it. You, know, you have to start making choices. Many of those folks are going to choose to go to other regions. Now, as you can see, uh, East Baton Rouge Parish as well as Ascension continue to grow in cases as well as St. Tammany. Livingston Parish is in the region with St. Tammany. Uh, and right now, uh, you know, as folks might have to sift out or shift out from the New Orleans healthcare system, they're going to go to those places. Now, where do Livingston Parish people go to for care? They go to Hammond, which is right next door to St. Tammany, or they go to Baton Rouge, which is slowly filling up. So you really need to be rooting for New Orleans to, to be able to keep this under control, keep those timelines extended so that there is no collapse or that there is no issue with providing critical health care infrastructure uh, so that these folks can get the care that they need and don't end up coming somewhere else and taking beds that might otherwise go to people, even in those home parishes that might, you know, Ascension still needs beds, East Baton Rouge is going to need beds, Hammond, all those places will need beds. So please be be rooting for these places to stay on top of the of this, you know, virus disaster. As we, as we move forward, uh, of course, one of the things that hit home for a lot of people here in Livingston Parish was War II Marshal Joe Mac Shoemate ended up in the hospital. Uh, he was released on Sunday. We're going to try to get in touch with him today uh, to sort of get uh, an idea of what that process was like. But of course, he's been through it. Uh, and and he can tell you, you know, one of the things he said coming out is that he hopes that people will understand that this is no joke and that the stay at home order is out there for a reason. So please keep that in mind. And of course, that's, uh, you know, a, a local person who has uh, who's very visible, who has gotten it. So this virus knows no bounds. Talking about Livingston Parish, we're up to 16 cases here confirmed. That's people from here who have been tested. In a lot of cases, they were tested somewhere else. 128 tests is about all that's been done here. Parish President Leighton Ricks said that he expects a testing site for Livingston Parish to come online soon. Now, exactly what date that is, he's not entirely sure, but we're going to be looking for that site to come on board so that people can go get tested, especially if they're feeling symptomatic, but they can't make it to Baton Rouge or Hammond. Uh, to get tested. Not entirely sure where that facility is going to be either at this point. However, he did say it is a conversation with a private uh, a private facility. So we'll see it perhaps centrally located, but no assumptions at this point. All we know is that at some point, hopefully in the next week or two, according to Parish President Leighton Ricks, the uh, Livingston Parish will get a testing site uh, for COVID-19. So keep your eyes uh, on our on our website, www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash coronavirus. It is free uh, to be on the lookout to see when that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, when that testing site will come online. Uh, we're talking about the $2.2 trillion uh, <laughs> stimulus. It's, it's hard to wrap your mind around. Uh, there's a lot going on here. Uh, one of the things that we talked about with Congressman Garrett Graves, uh, is that you're going to be signing up for that check uh, for yourself and for your children, if you have any, uh, at irs.gov. You also need to go ahead and do your 2019 tax return. According to Congressman Graves, uh, they're going to be looking at your most recent return, or in most cases, your 2019 return, but you're still going to have to go sign up for that check. As far as small business, you're going to have two choices here. You're going to have a choice to either take a loan that's forgivable based on certain expenses, or you can take a deferment on your payroll taxes up through the end of the year. You're still going to have to pay those payroll taxes, but you won't have to pay them either. And you can spread out the payments over 2021 and 2022 if you so choose. There also uh, is the economic injury disaster loan that's out there that's from the SBA. That is not forgivable and it may trigger some duplication of benefits issues. 
However, one of the things that Congressman Garrett Graves recommended is those 7A loans that we discussed uh, that were not the payroll defer deferment, but the other, they're called a SBA 7A. Uh, they are for payroll, utilities, uh, and mortgage or rent. So if as long as you, if you took that economic injury disaster loan, as long as you spend it on something that isn't in those three categories, again, payroll, <clears throat> excuse me, payroll, uh, utilities, there it is, and <laughs> mortgage or insurance, uh, you should be okay. Just don't, don't mix the two. Uh, and of course, it takes a little bit of accounting, but I trust that you can do it. Uh, there's also a lot of other um, things baked into that, especially for larger businesses and that sort of thing. Uh, but those are the things for small business and individuals that you need to kind of be on the lookout for. Again, you need to go ahead and do your 2019 tax return and sign up for the check at irs.gov. And those SBA loans, those are the various, uh, those are the various types that you can acquire uh, to try to get yourself through the next couple of months. Now, the reason we're going to have to do that is this. According to uh, President Donald Trump, not according to, he has extended his social distancing mandate through April 30th. Uh, the governor said that he expects to follow suit with his stay at home order uh, through April 30th. That means essential workers only. That means a lot of businesses are going to remain closed for another two weeks, uh, which means we're all gonna be still be at home for at least another month until about May 1st. The president said he expects big things on June 1st. So we don't even know if April 30th is really when this is gonna end. We're not gonna speculate on that, he just said that June 1st is when he expects big things from the country. So we're gonna be looking for this money to come through over the next four weeks, trying to get people through this time, get into May, uh, try to get things back open. With those mandates, we talked to Superintendent Joe Murphy. Uh, according according to the superintendent, they will be participating and, and uh, compliant with whatever mandate comes out of the governor's office and whatever guidance comes out of the Department of Education. Uh, no, no commitment or statement yet as to how that will affect school other than they will be closed uh, another week. Please remember that they were not coming back until April 20th. They were going to recognize spring break. At this point, it would not be coming back until roughly May. Uh, so we'll just have to see uh, over the coming days, once the uh, governor signs the proclamation to extend his stay at home order, how the Department of Education chooses to handle that situation. <clears throat> Excuse me. The uh, state police has given guidance on how to travel to Texas. Uh, basically, you go over there and you're going to quarantine for 14 days if you intend to stay for, stay there. Now, that is just for recreational travel. So it's a, it's, it's a two-week mandate that you will self-quarantine. Uh, if you're going over there as an essential worker or for commercial business, uh, the quarantine does not apply. However, you must have the appropriate paperwork. State police, Texas State Police are at the border. They are uh, talking to people. You can see some, uh, if you go online, you can see some interesting pictures of traffic backups at the Florida border because they have the same type order. Anybody traveling from Louisiana is to be stopped and to be self-quarantined. And anybody traveling from Louisiana to Texas is under the same mandate. So I-10 going into Florida from Alabama and I-10 going into Texas from the Lake Charles area are quite backed up at the moment as folks are trying to get through and either go to work if they happen to work at a plant there or be doing commercial business or going on a trip, uh, or maybe even driving through. So please check those, uh, I, I guess it's guidelines out at www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash coronavirus. Last but certainly not least, uh, Miss Reese Adams, a sixth grader at Dem Springs Junior High, made an interesting little art project uh, about the coronavirus and how the coronavirus needs to go away. It's, uh, it's a cute little series of photos. Uh, Mr. David Gray picked that up. You can check it out, www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash coronavirus. We want to remind folks <laughs> one last time, didn't, didn't quite get to these. Please remember your mitigation measures. Wash your hands for 20 seconds. Disinfect common surfaces. Control your cough with your elbow or a tissue. Control your sneezing with your elbow or a tissue. Uh, six feet of distance between you and others, especially in public places. No more than 10 in a gathering. And stay home if you're sick. Try to do telehealth with your doctor. Now that applies to the stay at home order. Of course, you can still go to the grocery store, the pharmacy, uh, or to see your doctor if it is indeed serious. Uh, now, if you have to go into work, following those mitigation methods is a very, very, very good idea. 
Uh, please remember that the, the growth pattern of this thing is exponential, which means that one infects three, those three infect nine, those nine infect 27, that kind of deal. Uh, but that goes the other way too. It, two, one person of that 27 uh, could touch uh, very quickly uh, one of the people that you work with and they could be bringing the coronavirus right into your office. So it's good to do walk, continue to wash your hands for 20 seconds once every, I believe it's 50 minutes and disinfect common surfaces at the office if you still have to go into work, especially if you're an essential worker. Most essential um, operations have already begun practicing these social distancing methods, but please remember the mitigation efforts. They are wildly important uh, at home and at the office uh, to try to curb the spread of this thing uh, as we keep fighting uh, the novel coronavirus here in Louisiana. One last time, my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys joining us this morning for the Livingston Parish News Morning Show. We are on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. We are once a week in print on Thursdays. We are also online at www.livingstonparishnews.com. Uh, we have an app to go with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, please remember that we also are, uh, please remember the Facebook algorithm, folks. I mean, I don't know how many people uh, are, are going to be um, looking for breaking news and stuff like that on Facebook. But please remember, sometimes it's not going to be delivered to you timely. Uh, a lot of times you're going to get it hours later, just depending on where we stack in your algorithm for that particular day for your uh, potential choices and that kind of thing. Um, so please, please, please try to go to that website, www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash coronavirus. We hope you have a great day and we will check you out tomorrow.